listen as sometimes happens in life the best laid plans totally go awry and so we were ready to go and I don't know what happened they clicked the camera at 7 o'clock to go live and everything crashed so I apologize that we're late getting to you but hey I'm glad that you're here and I am still very excited uh, about your of the other cameras that we had but uh, hey we're here to talk about the church and talk about what God's doing here and so here we are on our job site so let's take a tour and uh, we're gonna see together what God is doing come join me and we're gonna see what God is doing uh, here on our church campus so we're going through what will be the entryway into the new lobby here at the church and uh, this is so exciting because this is what used to be the front porch area. And now there's going to be an expanded area here with the tower addition is what we call it. It's a small jet out there. Uh, and then this will all be expanded lobby seating out here. And uh, will be uh, a great opportunity for fellowship from the cafe and after services and in between services. So this is going to be a great great uh, thing for us. And by the way, uh, we, we've, we're trying to answer all your questions tonight, but while I'm talking, if you come up with a question, if you'll send it to my email address at robbygreen at levondrive.org, we will get that question answered if we have time. We've got a lot of questions to answer, but I realize some of you may be getting questions as I go through. So let's keep going, and uh, we will go through and look at what God's doing here. Of course, these glass panels are the old walls of the doors that used to be here. All of this is coming out, and this will all be one open, giant, expanded uh, lobby area here at the church. And there will be doors on each side here. And uh, in a moment, we're going to go inside. But what we're going to do is start on the exterior of the worship center because we can't get inside the auditorium and uh, worship area space from the front here. So we're going to leave this area and we're going to walk across the parking lot to our student ministry building. Uh, and that is under, that has been demoed and is starting construction over there. So I want you to be able to see what that looks like. There's no lights in there, so we need to do that before it gets dark. So we're going to, we're going to walk and, and talk at the same time. And uh, as I come out, uh, James will pan over here to the side. You'll see all of this area. There's going to be beautiful landscape and new trees and shrubbery and flowers. And uh, we will have a lot of increased green space here. And uh, we will not have to have the uh, concrete jungle that we've had through the years here. And uh, so there'll be beautiful trees and shrubs all around the exterior of the building. And then just a few feet away, we come across the parking lot uh, to the Bridges Building, and uh, which will become our new student ministry building. And uh, I'm very excited about this building as well, because this is going to be a great, great place for our students to be able to meet. And so uh, as we come in here, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a taste of what's getting ready to happen here. So come on inside with me, and we'll come in inside and see what's going on. So it's pretty amazing for me to think that the last time this building was one open room was in the early 1960s. This was the building that was here when Brother Gary came on staff as senior pastor in 1964. This was the only building on campus at that point. And so this building originally was an auditorium up here and originally some Sunday school classes back in the back and an entrance up front. Um, as the building has been repurposed through the years, it's been all different designs and all different uh, departments and ministries use this building. But if you'll look this way, there will be a worship space here. For 200 teenagers, 200 students in our student ministry, there'll be a wall of the large 
large wall here. And so really, a lot of ways, this building is getting repurposed to be exactly what it was in the early 60s when the church began. And so I love to think of what God's doing here in our church. He's almost like taking us back to our roots again. But uh, this will be the worship center space for our student ministry. And uh, over here to the side, th this area over in here. This area here will be the cafe seating area. And then up front will be the cafe area there. In the other corner of the building, there will be uh, new restrooms and then a game room area over here uh, that you're looking at right now. But what is great about this space is once you go outside those double doors, there will be an outdoor, ca uh, uh, or outdoor patio and seating area, fire pits, and this is just going to be a great hangout place for our students after church and a great place for them to come and connect with other students. This will also be the place that our Spanish ministry will launch. And I, I want you to just stop and think about this. As we come into this room right here, this room will be where hundreds of students will gather on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. But then on Sunday morning, while we're having English services, this will be the room that the Spanish service launches in. And I'm so excited about what I believe God is going to do through our Spanish ministry. I want to thank you. I'll be updating a Sunday on our project offering from the GIC, which a large part of that goes toward the Spanish ministry. But I'm so excited to think what God's going to do right here in this building. And, uh, and to think that this is where our church started, but to think this is where our church is going to go to the next level by reaching the next generation and then also reaching an entire people group in our city that we have not reached before. So this is going to be really exciting to see this come together. We have enough money that we were able to gut the building, and we are uh, asking God services and then part of Levon Drive, you know that we need to continue raising the money for this building here, especially. And I'm praying that God's going to do that. I look forward to how God's going to answer that prayer. We're praying that God will give us the next step of money in this to be able to come in and do the framing of the walls. We've already done the plumbing. has already been roughed in. And uh, all the asbestos was removed. That's why the building is a blank slate, because there was asbestos in this building. So everything's been done here to prepare us for the next step. And, um, hey, I just feel the Lord leading us to do this. Could we just pray as a church family right here, right now, that God would, would help the funds to come in and that God would touch people's hearts and that we could reach people in this building here for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Lord, you own everything. This Everything in this world is yours. And Lord, I thank you that um, you already know how you're going to provide for this building. And so Lord, whether it's large shovelfuls on purpose or whether it's just a bunch of people giving small amounts, Lord, however you choose, or you may use a combination, whatever you may choose to use, we pray that you would fund this building so that we can continue to see you do great things in our church and lord it's not about our church our church exists to build your kingdom and lord we already have had students in this building and we've claimed and we've asked god to give us 300 students in our student ministry and god we want you to give us multiplied hundreds in the spanish ministry and then when they move out to another building because they've outgrown this building, Lord, our next language, whether that's Korean or Chinese or what other ministry you may put on our heart, Lord, this will be the launching place for the next service that happens for the next people group. Lord, we give you this and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. Just pray, and I hope you were praying with me. But we still have a lot to tour, so let's keep going across the parking lot here. And uh, we will now go to the worship center. 
and we're going to do that together. And there is so much happening in the worship center. Oh, my word. Prepare to be blown away. Okay? Church family, this is going to be exciting. <clears throat> we're getting ready to go through the doors of the new, improved, unbelievable, exciting worship space for Levon Drive. And so we're going to hop in here and uh, see what God's doing. So I'll speak to the outside just real quick. There's a lot of green board. We are a very green ministry right now. Uh, so this is the first step. The next step will be for um, there's a waterproofing material that gets painted on. So this building will actually turn from green to blue. And uh, then the very next thing that will happen is they will begin to put an EFAS coating across the front. And it's, a, it's like a stucco type material. And uh, it'll blend in very nicely with the other buildings. That was supposed to have been started already. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but with all the rain we've had, we're a little behind on that. Nothing too seriously, but uh, we are a little bit behind on that. So that's what's going on on the outside of the building. You see all the new guttering and everything that's been put in on the columns. These will be nice brick columns that match the Coleman Center brick. An exciting thing uh, when people pull up here to have all the buildings match together. So let's go on inside here to the worship center. <clears throat> well, many of you remember there used to be a doorway right here that went into the sanctuary. So that's being closed off now. And uh, you'll understand a little bit more about that in a moment. But as we walk through here, we can see, uh, you can see some of the steel structure that has been reinforced. You may remember we talked extensively about the... Um, the, the structural integrity issues in the building, and there's a lot of steel that's been added. It's kind of hard to see it on camera. There's a few more spots right through here uh, that you can see that we've added the steel, but uh, a lot more up in the uh, higher parts of the building than what you can really see on camera. But uh, that was part of our big issue that we talked about back in the fall. But now we're coming in the door of what will be the new orchestra rehearsal room for the church, and this will also double as a band hall for Garland Christian Academy. I want you to look at how large this room is. Scott Copeland, you better get recruiting. You got a lot of people to get in here to fill up the orchestra, and uh, this will be a great thing because we have taken out the bad section of seating in the auditorium that was always so hard to see the platform. And so uh, what will happen uh, you'll come in the building, just walk up the, the circular hallway that has a slight ramp that goes up. You can come into this room here because we've added a concrete floor in here that's raised. And in, or, or the orchestra and the choir, um, they will not even have to climb any steps to get on stage. Literally, they will roll, come right out and they can walk right out here onto our stage. And so I'm really excited uh, about this space here. This is going to be a great space um, for our church orchestra and our high school and middle school band program, our elementary band program at Garland Christian Academy. And so this will be a great space here. There's some storage space for the orchestra and uh, band departments right here in this room here. And then as we come out, um, we're coming across into the main foyer area again. And uh, from time to time on our tour, you will see some, you'll see some uh, uh, TV places mounted here for TVs. These are the campus message centers. So we will have campus message centers that uh, will be able to give announcements, that will be able to give... Um, a live feed of the service in different buildings, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, this whole area is getting a makeover, and you will notice kind of this grand entryway that is right here. This is so exciting. This area here will transition from the circular hallway into our newly renovated and improved uh, lobby area. And, and really Main Street or the mall area. This will be a big happening place 
out here on Sundays and other events. And so let me kind of just uh, walk you through what's going to happen. You see the hole in the floor. This is for the electrical and uh, the data cables that are being run in for the new Welcome Center. The Welcome Center will be right here in the middle. And then, uh, James, if you'll, you'll go over to this corner over here, uh, there is uh, the new, improved, incredibly spacious ladies' bathroom, like you've never seen before, ladies. I was never in there, but I was told that it was very cramped before. So that'll be, that'll be great. There'll be an area for nursing mothers in, in, connected to that. And uh, so a nice new area for our uh, ladies. Over on this side, you see where the glass doors that go out into the area that we started in. So that's what we'll be transitioning into. And then over here on this side, uh, we will have a new and improved men's restroom over here. And then also we will have a large cafe area here uh, that will serve our ministry not only on Sunday morning services, but at events throughout the week. This will really be a place. This is an awesome thing. This area here will be a hub. Uh, I'm laughing because James nearly fell into the, the, the cut concrete here. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Pastor Kirby, for rescuing. Uh, this will be a, a real hub of activity throughout the week for ladies and moms that want to come up here and have Bible studies in the morning or maybe GCA parents on the way to school dropping their kids off and, and, and they'll be able to have a time of fellowship and, and Bible study and when I do coffee with pastor instead of having to go to a coffee shop in downtown Garland I'll just be coming across the parking lot right here so that'll be very exciting and uh, this is the first doorway right over here the single doorway this will be an entry area to a small play area for moms to be able to let their kids play uh, while uh, they're having coffee and fellowship out here uh, during the week. So that'll be a, a nice activity area for kids. And then, now we're walking into the fun part. Now we're walking into one of the side doors of our newly renovated worship center. So uh, there will be a set of doors back here as you come in. And we are inside of what's called uh, a sound lock, a sound lock if you misunderstood because of the echo there'll be another set of doors right here and what that will allow is to ensure that inside our worship center space that there will be uh, no interruptions from what's going on out in the lobby uh, in between services and so as we get in here this is really exciting to see how this is starting to take shape take shape in here so there will be hundreds and hundreds of stadium-style seating or theater-style seating. It'll be permanently attached to the floor and have a lift-up bottom like at a, a, a stadium event or theater-type seating. Really nice, comfortable chairs that uh, I think everybody will enjoy. Up at the front of the stage, you can see the two main holes that will be the uh, where the rear projection screens will be. Uh, mounted and so that'll be for our uh, not only for our lyrics but for our uh, image magnification from the cameras we'll have the capability of being able to do the iMags up there for uh, the live speakers and then the, the stained glass of course will stay but this area that's around it right now this white sheetrock that's there right now that will all be stacked stone and uh, so that's going to be a beautiful addition. Uh, if you look up, James, you can see that there, are, there is no more um, catwalk up here. Yeah, that's all been removed. And uh, so there will be a whole new lighting. This is the old lighting that's in here right now. So there will be a brand new uh, AVL package in here, audio, video, and lighting package that is put in here. And then... We're coming up on stage. This is a big change. Um, we have lowered the stage. The old stage would have been somewhere about right here, about waist high, and uh, we have lowered that stage. And so this goes all the way back 
The choir risers will be back here, and there will be a nice large area here for orchestra. And it's hard to maybe visualize at the moment, but this stage literally will go all the way over to where the opening is over there. And uh, that will be where the, the orchestra can come out. And then, hard to see because of the lift, but there's over where these pallets of materials are, over here will be uh, the, the choir entrance to come out on stage. And so this is going to be, man, I just cannot wait to see what it's gonna be like in here our first Sunday. Uh, can you just begin to pray with me about how exciting this is gonna be? and the opportunities that we're gonna to have to impact people for the kingdom of God. Friend, everything that we're doing in this project is all about the kingdom of God. We're doing this for his honor, for his glory, and to reach people for him. And so this worship space is gonna be a great worship space. You can see up into the balcony, and the balcony seating is being reduced, but uh, I don't know how well they can see it, but there's a fan up in the corner of that one section. That is, that section of the balcony there is being renovated to be where the new sound booth will be. And any of you that have been here a while and are familiar with the, the sound room or what used to be the sound room, the windows have been closed off, and that will be our video broadcast room. And so all of the video cameras and everything will be mixed in there, the sound for the live view and uh, all the services, all that will be done up there. So this is just kind of a, a little bit of an overview. We could look at a lot of other things, but for the sake of time, we'll keep moving here tonight. Hey, Pastor Kirby, what do you think is going to be the most exciting feature of this building? Put you on the spot here. Yes. Never put it down to one to one thing and you would put me on the spot right there with, with that but definitely i think we're, we're just going to feel much closer in here without having those wings nobody those wings were never the best seating yep. never the best sound yep. and uh and so that's going to help us feel a little bit closer just like we yes. are in the gym and not, yes. not scattered it's going to give much more of that family feeling that, yes. we, that we've enjoyed in the gym yeah i think that's a great feature so many of you have commented about that about how you feel that we're like much more a family in, in a, a smaller venue in the gym. And uh, I agree that'll be a, a great uh, thing to have in here. I think what I look forward to the most, James, go back up on stage for a second. And I think as pastor, what I look forward to is looking out here and seeing this building filled with multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, people that our community is filled with this all different people groups all different nations nationalities generational uh, age groups and, and all of that and God has put our church here together I can't wait to look out across this building on Sunday morning and see every nation every tribe every tongue that God is going to bring here and Pastor Kirby that gets me excited when I stop and think about that and uh, so uh, this is really progressing along quite nicely in here. Let's go on back here and, and take a, a look at some of the other features of the building. So incidentally, you may have noticed stacks of sheetrock that are all different places. So let me tell you where they are. We have finished all of the electrical rough in. We finished all of the rough in for the data cables, the phone cables, uh, internet connection, the, the message centers, all those different things that had to be run through the, the studs. That's all been done. And we are literally just very soon, we're gonna be starting all the sheetrock in here uh, on this building. So a lot of people have asked, so you can pan around and look, the wood that is up on the up, upper section above the balcony, that's going to stay. That'll be cleaned up, of course. It's dirty right now. The wood ceiling, that's a beautiful architectural feature of this building. So that's not going away either. Those things are staying. But the smaller rooms that are all around the outside of the sanctuary, that will all be sheetrocked all the way around all four walls so that everything matches. And then as we come out here, 
again, we saw the, um, the lobby space here, the mall area that's just going to be so incredible. Now we're coming back into transitioning back into the circular hallway here. And so we will go from an open industrial type ceiling out front, out here, and we will transition into this area back to a ceiling tile type ceiling uh, that will come back in here. And uh, we wondered the lights just went out. We didn't lose power. Uh, we're just trying to get the lights turned off as we tour. So we're coming around the circular hallway here. And again, a lot of, oh, hey, James, I forgot to show in the choir room. Let's put the choir room. So uh, let's go in the choir room here. And uh, I don't know how well we'll be able to see it is getting dark. But uh, choir music, uh, worship space, or excuse me, storage space here. And then this room right here will be the new ushers room for our ushers on Sunday morning. And then we come in here and we have basically an identical room to what we had with the band hall uh, and the orchestra room. You may feel like this room is a little smaller and it is because there will be four levels of risers in here that will allow the choir to be able to comfortably fit in here and uh, they'll have room for growth and this will be a great practice area for them. So Pastor Ryan, you have plenty of space to grow the choir so you and Scott get after it and get filling these choir rooms and orchestra rooms up. Um, so as we come around the uh, other side here of the circular hallway, many of you that have been here for a long time remember that there was a hallway that was circular that went all the way around the building. And uh, we are kind of changing that up a little bit to, to change some things that needed to be changed. So for example, here is the entrance way. There'll be doors here, but this will go, in, if you made a left, we'll go into the choir rehearsal area. But if you go straight in through another set of doors, there is a, uh, that'll put you out on stage uh, to the main sanctuary. When we get over here, you may notice some area that is plywooded off. Basically right where I'm standing right here, will be a double set of doors that will be blocking off what is now backstage. And then this doorway here will be one of the pass-through hallways that go into the east wing. And so we're really excited about this. So you will not have a circular hallway anymore. You'll have a semicircle that goes into a three-quarter square and back into the circle. Uh, you will still be able to go all the way around the east wing and connect back to the other side of the circular hallway and I'll let you see that in a little bit. Uh, if you go down these steps here, this is where the old choir practice room used to be and that has been converted to storage which is desperately needed for props and different uh, pieces of equipment used in the sanctuary. Of course our sanctuary is not only used for Levon Drive but will also be used for Garland Christian Academy. And so this is a, a exciting thing and a big deal for everyone to be able to have storage space that they've not had before. This area back here will be a backstage area, which may not seem very important, except if you knew how many big concerts, music ministry events, or GCA events, or even weddings and funerals, that we need a backstage area. This will meet a real need here. This doorway here will open back into a private bathroom area for people that are backstage. And then if we come over here, this doorway will lead into a room that I don't think has lights, so you won't be able to see much. But this is the new green room. And some have asked if it was named after Robbie Green. And no, green room is a theater term. And so a green room is a backstage room where uh, guest speakers and such can meet and pray. And uh, so it is not the Robbie Green Room, but it is a green room. And so that'll be back here as well. And then you will see uh, back over here steps that lead not only to the stage area, but also steps that lead up to the balcony area as well. And so this will be uh, a great uh, area for our special events ministry and department to be able to get things ready. You guys may not realize this. We'll walk this way as we talk. But 
there are weeks that we have to do so many setups and tear downs because we have a church event like a funeral and then we have a church service and then we have uh, a special chapel for the secondary and maybe a kindergarten graduation and then maybe a spring concert i mean there are literally times that we have three four five events in this building in one week and so to be able to have a backstage area that is a huge deal for anybody that's involved in ministry up here so we're going to go outside again because that's right now the only way that we can get into the east wing and uh, James is doing a great job. I hope no one's getting seasick. Our other camera uh, would have been on a device that kept everything level, but uh, we're doing the best we can. So let's look out over here. There's two areas here uh, that I'll call your attention to, but first of all, maybe, James, there's the pass-through hallway, and that is not a double door. That is a large window that's in place there. And uh, so that'll be something that's available for our uh, church family to pass through from the east wing to the worship center. This area here will be one of two playgrounds for our new daycare. The Launchpad Learning Center, we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes when we get inside for question and answer. But uh, Launchpad Learning Center, this will be the younger kids playgrounds here. And then this area over here will be for the older kids. And uh, so this will be completely, completely chain link fenced in with uh, playground equipment and uh, will be a, a really nice uh, calling card, if you will, for families that are coming to uh, Garland Christian Academy, Levon Drive Baptist Church, and the Launchpad Learning Center. So now, we are getting ready to go inside to what will be, what we have known for years as the East Wing, is now becoming the Children's Ministry Building. What a transformation in here. This is so incredible. So here is one of the pass-through hallways that I was talking about. But then, come on around here, James, and they get the idea. Right here will be a large check-in area with check-in desk for our elementary age children's ministry kids. They will check in here. There will be a staff of people waiting to check their kids in. And they will enter through a secure location right here and go upstairs first through sixth grade to be ministered to by our, our highly qualified and, and incredible children's ministry workers. And then there will be another set of doors right here that uh, these are just temporary doors. These are not the real doors. There'll be glass doors going in here. And same thing over here. There's a, a, a different type of door going there. But then on this side, there will be a, another check-in welcome station for our uh, nursery age and preschool age children. They will check in here. There'll be another group of staff. If you've got kids in both, there'll be a, a simplified check-in system. You won't have to do uh, both here. But then when you get over to this area, there's a glass wall that'll be through. And this area in here will be a two-level indoor playground for our children's ministry uh, kids. They're gonna, this will be a great time for them to be able to enjoy playing while mom and dad are talking out here and enjoying each other's company. And so uh, here you see another pass-through hallway door. And uh, I see over here they've got a bunch of panels for the new fire alarm system. Those are just temporarily on that wall. They're going into a closet over on the other side. But uh, then when we come around here, many of you may remember the East Wing hallway that came through. And this was the entranceway into the old worship center space. So, we are now on the other side of what is the green room. So the East Wing bathrooms are still here and will still function uh, as they were remodeled here just a couple of years ago. All that was done with this project in mind. And uh, you see here the, the three television areas. I think there's a, a children's ministry message center board, a campus message center board, and then there's a TV that will be for the live feed 
of the services on Sundays. And so as we come back here, uh, we're coming back into the children's ministry area, and I'm not going to show you every room, but I will show you a couple of the rooms and what's being done. So we are uh, doing everything in here to bring this area into compliance for having a state licensed daycare facility. That's what the Launchpad Learning Center will be. And so uh, you can see one of the uh, exit doors that now exist over here. So all of our, uh, I am walking totally on glue. So, um, so I'm, I'm gonna be a sticky person here for the rest of the evening. Uh, man, you guys think this tour is long. We've about got stuff on the floor right there. Uh, so this is all being set up with uh, fire alarms and uh, the new fire alarms and the new exit doors and everything that needs to be done to make this worship space not only safer for our kids on Sunday morning, but also to comply with the local and state codes for daycare. You can see another exit door back over there by the exit sign. And then some of our ladies that have worked in the nursery area for years, uh, we've expanded and opened up some more of the rooms. And uh, so this is a kind of a, a work in progress, if you will. And uh, this is another one of the exit doors. So basically every room that has a... Um, Every room has an exterior door now that goes out for safety. So that's a big improvement uh, for our children's ministry and then for our daycare. So we'll come around this way here. And so the same thing's being done on these other rooms here. We won't go into every room, but that'll give you an idea uh, of what it's going to be like. There's new doors going in here. So the back doors of the east wing have been taken out. There will be new back doors put in. Uh, they'll be put in here very soon. Some of you have been down this hallway before. Maybe this will be a new thing for some of you. But this is our theater room, which is not really ready for display. Sorry, John Wood. Uh, but this is a, a cool area for the younger kids. It's a an area where they can watch uh, their, their videos that go with their Sunday school lesson or children's ministry lesson. And then that backstage area also doubles as a uh, puppet stage. You can see the new security door exit there, or fire exit. And then there's these nice comfortable theater seats and bean bags for the kids. And obviously with us being shut down right now, uh, this is kind of, everything's not really ready for church. So, you know, church family. God already knew what was going to happen with all this, and so we just have the opportunity to go ahead and get some construction work done that would have been really difficult to get done. I was thinking about this, Pastor Kirby. This would have been tough having to still have children's ministry in here. We would have done it, and uh, but this has allowed them to be able to work at a much faster pace and get a lot more work done. So uh, we're really excited about what's going to happen. So James, we'll go back out and around and we'll get another quick view of the outside while we're on, my, on our way to my office to be able to uh, have a little bit of conversation with the question and answers. <clears throat> I can't wait to come through here. This past year at Vacation Bible School, I mean literally um, hundreds and hundreds of boys and girls. Uh, as a matter of fact, the last night of Vacation Bible School, over 1,500 here. Can you imagine what this building is gonna look like with parents lined up out here to pick up their kids, kids playing on the playground, and moms and dads talking about what their kids have learned. Uh, at Vacation Bible School. This really excites me, and I can't wait to... This dream is becoming a reality. This is something we've been praying about and dreaming about as a church family for many years. So we have... Uh, a number of new islands that have been added out on the parking lots. 
Also, there are new light poles going in. The existing light poles will stay, but we're adding additional light poles uh, for security so that uh, there will be additional light here in the evenings. And uh, James, maybe just show them the, the exterior doors that are there on the east wing. There's two on this side. And then there's uh, two over here on this side, on the east side of the east wing. So another security door here. And then another one back by the back door of the east wing as well. And uh, as we continue our walk across, so a lot of people have asked, okay, Pastor, if there's playgrounds over on this other side, side and uh, this is going to be uh, completely landscaped. There'll be trees and shrubs and flowers, and uh, we'll have a nice sidewalk that goes down the way here to uh, the new entrance. Oh, we got to see that. We got to see that. We will. We'll be able to have a nice quick walk from the worship center space and the children's ministry area over to the gym for special formers will be totally screened off then there's another new entrance on the north side of the east wing and this has been a, a great benefit to our children's ministry so mom and dad can park on the south side or the north side and take their kids in uh, to the children's ministry building here all right, we're ready to keep walking across here. I'm gonna walk across here. Now as we continue, uh, you see the islands. There's another spot where the orange cones are that will be, um, there'll be another light pole over there. And then incidentally, um, this is Levon Drive Cargo Container Park over here. And so this is where a bunch of our uh, different things are being stored right now. Uh, if you look out over the playground here, that's kind of a night, but uh, we are introducing a fundraising campaign for our school families to be able to be a part of uh, that is going to totally renovate and bring this playground up to up to date. Pastor Kirby, I hear our grounds crew working at dark. It has rained so much they could not even work and now they're trying to get everything here to my office. We're going to do a little question and answer. This very well may be the most people I've ever had in my office at once right now. We'll come on in. I'm glad to be and uh, let's see, we'll come on around here. Okay, and uh, let's see, I think I am here. Is that correct? That's fine. All right. And of course the fish tank light decided to turn on for the night. So imagine you have to go to bed too. Um, yeah, imagine the fish swimming back there behind you in your uh, in your living room. So I'm gonna give James. Do you need to get that on the tripod? Um, I can't right now. You can't. Okay. Because okay. of yeah. Hey, just be thankful for James. I'm sure he's tired of holding a camera. He may have carpal tunnel or something tonight with his hand by the time he's done. Hey, so Pastor Kirby, these are exciting times. Yes, sir. I'm so excited about what God's doing in our church. And, um, boy, I walk across that parking lot, and I see all the construction, and I see everything that we're doing, and I am constantly thinking about all the different things that God is going to do in our ministry. And so everything that we've just talked about, all of the different, uh, I guess Pastor Kirby decided he didn't like me. He's leaving. <laughs> All of the different things that we're doing um, are being done with one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to reach people for Jesus Christ. So the buildings are exciting, and the, the reimagine campaign's exciting, but let me tell you what's more exciting. Can we just stop and thank the Lord for what He's doing? Let me just give you some praises. I know it's real easy to get focused on 
everything that's happened the last three weeks. I mean, I don't know how many people have emailed me or texted me or called me, Pastor, we're not having church. And it's true, this will be our third Sunday to not have church on campus. We are still having church. This church is still moving forward. But let me tell you, this is Sunday number 13 that we're coming up, 13th Sunday of the year. Can I tell you, and I think James is getting us a little more connected here, and uh, hopefully you're not getting seasick at the moment. We'll let him get set. But one of the things that excites me the most, let's talk about what happened the first 10 Sundays of this year. Pastor Kirby, do you realize in the first 10 Sundays of this year, we have had in attendance over an increase of over 100 per week in our attendance. That's, um, that's incredible considering we're right in the middle of construction. Exactly. And uh, many times when the church is going through construction like this, it, it, it loses focus of what's going on and all the attention gets to be on the construction itself. Yes. And uh, very thankful for Ron Ritchie and his yes. supervision Amen. over the construction. To really Can't wait to get Ron Ritchie back. Yes, too. And, uh, <laughs> so it's going to be, that's, that's allowed our church and our pastoral staff to stay focused on ministry while the construction is going on. And, um, and I think I think that's the proof of it, that our attendance is continuing to yes. to grow in the midst of this. Yes. And uh, so I, I think it's a, it's a testimony of the excitement of yes. our people too. Yes. And they are excited to see these changes and to, yes. uh, to dream about what that building yes. is going to look like and to get back in there. And yes. So it, it, there's definitely a sense of excitement yeah. amongst our people. Over 80% of our growth has been in the drive-in area. For some of you that only come to the first service, I know some of, most people have a service they choose to come to, the first service or the second service. Um, some of you that come to the first service, I encourage you when we start services back, physical services back on Sunday morning, you ought to, you ought to come to a second service. I think you'd be shocked when you look around at how many new faces and new people are coming on Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you've seen, if you're in the second service, the live baptisms. If you're in the first service, you've seen the recording of the baptisms. We're seeing so many people. We are, at this point, about 20 baptisms ahead of where we were the same time a year ago. In other words, at the end of first quarter, we have baptized 20 more than what we baptized a year ago. Hey, the number is just that. It's just a number. But I want you to know that behind every number is life change. And that's what God's doing. And the video this Sunday of life change, uh, you've got to be online with us Sunday morning. Don't miss the service because it's going to be incredible, the video that you're going to see about what God's doing. So Pastor Kirby, I want to be respectful of the time. Uh, we've been online now about 45 minutes, and I want to make sure that we don't just uh, put everybody to sleep tonight. Maybe this will be a good sleep aid on, uh, for somebody on the evening. Uh, I, I put them to sleep on Sunday morning, so I can put them to sleep on Friday night. Don't, don't set me up. I'm trying I just to be nice. I'm going ahead and saying what I'm you would say. trying to be nice. So, uh, so we, we want to start off with talking about our blessings and then uh, talk about any new things that may be coming up with construction that people can expect in the next few weeks. Yeah. So the, the next phase of construction really is getting ready to ramp up, and that is the exterior of the um, worship center space. As a matter of fact, they were here on the property today boring uh, pipe underneath all the parking lot going to the islands for electrical and for irrigation and all the different pipes that needed to be run under the parking lot. Uh, that they have spent all day today doing that. It's my understanding they're doing that tomorrow as well. Um, we're getting ready to move to a, a stage where once the building is officially dried in, then they can really go to the uh, stage of, of sheetrock and everything on the inside of the building. Okay. Um, one of the questions that was sent in is, is in, I, know, I know none of us have an exact date, but uh, can, you, can you give our, our church family just an idea of when can we, we expect to move into the building? Sometime before Jesus comes back, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> You're no. um, so, you know, if you look at the sign that's on the side of the worship center, 
we, we debated when we started, we were going to say coming in January of 2020. I'm glad we just put coming in 2020. Uh, so we're obviously with the delays of the different things, we, we've, we're, we're a little behind. Um, when we started the construction project back officially back in the fall on the worship center, we were thinking uh, an early fall move in and I would say probably a late fall, uh, early winter move in. I, I do feel at this point we are behind a little bit, not because of construction delays, but because of weather delays, all the rain that we've had. We've had like 17 inches so far this year, and so they're behind on that. Uh, we do feel like that we will be, um, we will be in, we believe, in 2020. Can you guys talk louder? I said I can't hear you at home. Both of us. Talk a little bit louder, yes, sir. Okay, we can do that. We can talk louder. We can do that. Hopefully that's better. Um, the Someone asked the question, what, what has God taught you as pastor through this corona crisis? What lessons mm -hmm. have you learned? And that would probably be a really long answer. But, yeah. uh, I think the short answer to that, what have I learned during the corona crisis would be that the church is still the church whether we get to physically meet together or whether or not we are meeting virtually. Our church has stepped up and continued to do ministry. So let me just, I mean, this is incredible to me. So because of the generosity of God's people giving, um, we have helped the Friendship House. We've helped another uh, food pantry here in Garland. As a matter of fact, I was just there today, uh, and they were so thankful for our help. Um, of course, many of you have written notes of encouragement to our elected officials. I thank you for doing that. We have established the Garland prayer line uh, for people to be able to call in. And so about 50 of our people in the church are manning that. And uh, it's all automated, but it goes to our people in our church, and they get to pray with people that call in needing help. We right now have somewhere around 1,800 face masks being made by uh, men and women in our church. If you want to be a part of that, there'll be a place you can sign up for that uh, Sunday on the Digital Connect card, or you can um, you can send me an email at robbiegreen at levondrive.org if you'd like to be a part of that. We still need, uh, I would love to be able to double it and do 2,000 more face masks if we could do that. But our church, God has taught us that it's all about him and he is fully in control. And so even though things are chaotic and crazy, our God's still in control. That's what I've learned more than anything that's blessed my heart, seeing our church continue to be the church. Right, that's great. Has any, do we know of anyone in our church that has tested positive for the coronavirus? Yeah, that's a great question. I do, I do not know of anyone in our church family that is either suspected uh, or is currently been diagnosed. Uh, we have had several that had to be tested, but they all came back negative. And uh, that would not only be for Lavondra Baptist Church, but that would be for Garland Christian Academy as well. So we don't know of anyone in our church family, our bus ministry family, or our school family that has been uh, diagnosed with this. So we praise the Lord for that. And any of, if any of you know of someone that has been as tested positive, if you please let us know that. We'd certainly want to know that, and that is possible. Pastor, uh, when do you have any idea when we may be able to have services back on our property? You know, that is a question. If I had the answer to that, I could probably pay for the building over there single handedly. Um, you know, we just don't know right now. The Dallas County order. Uh, is set to expire a week from tonight on April 3rd. I don't have any inside track, but I just don't see any way that's not going to be extended. Um, you know, I hate to set a date, but I think we're in for, for a number of weeks still. Uh, it, we don't know, but I, I will be very surprised if we're able to do Easter in a live setting. How do you think this may impact our bus ministry? Yeah, so that has been a question that's been asked a lot. And uh, so I'm thankful for Pastor Royce and his workers. Um, before the, the order was given to shelter in place, um, many of our bus workers were going out and visiting kids on Saturday. Obviously, they're not in a position to do that now.
but I've been blessed where I've heard that some have been FaceTiming and others have been calling and making contact with their families. Some have been going by and just leaving notes on the door. Yeah. And just let them, yeah. let them know that we love them and praying for them. And we miss them here. And Absolutely. if any of you are watching, please know that we do miss you. And Absolutely. Continuing to pray for you, even though you can't be here right now. There will be a big Sunday to get them all ramped back up yeah. and, and come back. A family to reunion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How has this impacted the Grace Center? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? So obviously the Grace Center is very loose knit ministry of our church, but they operate with their own board and their own people. I, I'm blessed to sit on that board, but uh, actually they are not allowed to operate right now, if I understand it correct, because of the uh, order that's been given. There's not dental work that's able to be done, except maybe in extreme situations, emergency situations. And so, um, Grace would probably be able to speak to that more than me, but I know that it has greatly impacted their ministry. We need to pray for them. I know that that's their heart um, as well. As a matter of fact, talking about the Grace Center, we, we had the check cut today for the GIC offering to send to them. So uh, there's, there's help on the way financially for the Grace Center because of our church. How is all this going to impact the start of our daycare? Yeah, so the daycare... Um, we are still going to be launching that. We don't have that date yet because we don't know when that's going to be. We, we know it will be sometime, Lord willing, in the second quarter, obviously, but um, we still are waiting. So there, there's nothing, um, they're moving as fast as they can with the construction. The plan had been to open early April. And obviously that's not going to be able to happen right now. But, but we are still full speed ahead and be listening for a date. As soon as we know one, we'll be getting that date out there. I know we've got people wanting to apply to work at the, uh, at the launch pad. We've got parents wanting to enroll their kids at the launch pad. And we promise you, as soon as we know something, we will let you know something. Uh, we're, we're having to work. If you know anything about child care, you're working with multiple agencies so you got the state the city the fire marshal and food service and all these different departments that it's not just one certificate you, it, you have to have a bunch of people sign off to get that and so we're a little bit in their hands right now pastor you were the children's pastor here for 17 years and summer ministry here is huge at Levon drive and so many people are involved and people are starting to ask you know how can they plan for their summer, do we expect it still to do BBS? Are we going to be able to have junior camp and, and teen camp? Can you give us any update on what you think may happen with that? Yeah. So right now, we are still all systems go. Uh, we have not canceled any reservations for teen camp. We've not canceled any reservations for junior camp. And it is our desire to still go forward with Vacation Bible School. That, we just don't know right now. And we're going to probably have to get another, you know, well, the good news is, is we're still within an acceptable window of time. So if this uh, shelter in place order were to lift at the end of April, early May, I think there's still a pretty strong possibility that we can get all this pulled together and go. But we're just going to have to wait and see. So besides our church ministry, obviously we have a Christian school ministry here. And uh, so... Uh, many of our parents who have children in our school understand how GCA has adjusted to this new schedule. But can you let our church people understand what's happening at GCA? Yeah. And they've done great. I, uh, they, uh, teachers, I, I'll, I'll, cool. I have, I've told our school board this. I've told pastor this. I've told uh, Mrs. Andrasek this. I think last or two weeks ago when we met with the school board and that task force that met over spring break to get ready for this transition. I think that is probably my proudest moment of GCA since I've been here, how they, those folks stepped up to the plate and began to put a crisis plan together. And it wasn't just a knee-jerk reaction. It is incredible, the technology they put into place. And plus two, just how our teachers have adjusted. And many of our teachers, we're thankful for the longevity of many of our teachers that have taught over 20 years and yet are learning a completely new format. So would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, when on, on Friday, um, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. 
interesting enough, uh, when the order was given that uh, we would not be able to have live events, uh, a group of our people had already been meeting that week. That was the end of spring break, and as Pastor Kirby said, a group of people had already been meeting. And so we, um, this task force literally took one week. We extended spring break one week, and this past Monday morning, we transitioned literally into a completely online format. Uh, our teachers are teaching lessons, uploading them into Google Classroom. And our students are, are learning, they're taking tests online. Everything has gone to an online environment. And our kids are right on track with where they need to be. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we are advertising next week. We're giving people in the community an opportunity to finish the last two months of uh, their school year online at Garland Christian Academy, and there'll be a big, um, I kind of get letting you in on the, the preview of that. There'll be uh, a big a advertising campaign and announcement about that uh, first part of next week. But our teachers have crushed it. They've done great. Yes. And, and I want to say a shout out too to, to what Kathy's done, Kathy Andersack and her team. Um, for the first time, literally since 1998, uh, we finished the end of February with 93% of our current enrollment re-enrolled for next year. And if God sends us the number, average number of new students that we've had in previous years, next year is going to be a year of great growth for Garland Christian Academy. And I'm excited to see that. And did I read that actually four classes have 100% enrolled? Yeah, four classes have 100% of their students re-enrolled for next year. And um, what that means is, this is gonna be exciting, we're probably gonna have classes go to a waiting list this year uh, and that's the first time that that's happened in a good while and it just shows that God's working and I'm so proud of our team and how how God is blessed in that area parents if you have a senior in high school I want you to know our staff mm -hmm. has been praying for your senior and this has to be a tough year for them because all of us can remember how much we enjoyed our senior year of high school and uh, so we've been praying for them and we understand that many of their activities and events have been canceled so, Pastor, somebody has asked, how do we think uh, this is going to impact K-5 and senior graduation this year at GCI? Yeah. So, we are committed to having graduation, if at all possible. Kindergarten graduation is a little iffy because they're younger and they are the star of the show. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know whether or not kindergarten graduation, we hope we can do it, but we, I can't make you that promise. I will tell you, we are committed to having high school graduation. If I have to have it July 31st, we're going to have high school graduation for our kids. And uh, that is important to us. As a matter of fact, I have on my desk right now, I, I've just written every senior in our school a letter, uh, just sharing my heart with them. I wish that things were different right now. But we know God's in control, and uh, we're still looking at We had to cancel the senior trip because they were going out of the country. And so. We're looking at ways maybe even to be able to get some type of senior trip for our high school kids at GCA, for our senior class at GCA. And so we'll see what the Lord has. But uh, there will be a graduation ceremony. Uh, we just don't know the date yet. Okay. Pastor, I know it's starting to get late, and I appreciate those of you that have hung in there with us. We do have a couple of questions left that people have sent in. If you want to right. finish, if somebody wants to hop off, they yeah. can hop off. Yeah, right. feel no pressure. You can come back and look at it later. Right, absolutely. Uh, if you want to. still be on, we, the, on our Facebook Absolutely. Page. And we just, I think we just have a few more minutes here. Yes. To, just a couple more questions. Uh, and I, I appreciate so many. I've received so many texts and emails and phone calls. I'm sure you have as well. Just people asking, hey, what are, what are we doing? How is the, st how is the church staff adjusted to this new schedule and what are we doing? I know people are concerned about us and that we're staying safe and so you'll give them a little bit of update of what's happening yeah. with that. So again, thankfully nobody is ill on our staff, but we are operating remotely right now and so only essential personnel, which is really just a, a, a hand, very small handful of people that are even here. 
Um, the construction site is still deemed a essential operation. I don't make the rules, I'm just telling you what they are, but we have to have a construction office or receiving office open for uh, shipping for supplies. There's shipments every day that come in for the building. So we're doing that. The phones are still being manned. Staff is still checking email, but uh, really with few exceptions, our staff is all uh, having to office from home right now while we're in a shelter in place order. I appreciate people's concern as well, just to, as far as um, someone asked, are we able to continue to pay our staff during this yeah. time? Hey, let me speak to this church. Because you believe in supporting God's work and you've been faithful in God's work, we've not had to lay off any staff and we have no plans of any staff reduction, any staff um, layoffs, any staff uh, cut in pay or anything like that. Some of you know last year we did have to do some restructuring on our staff uh, to realign the budget going into this year and uh, that was done and that's over and we're at this point I, I feel like we're you know we, we can't let up any we don't have an ounce no we have not held back any mission support all of our missionaries were paid right on time in March and they will be paid right on time in April we have not eliminated or cut back on any mission support um, and again we're able to do that because you have been faithful we're able to, to have the money to do all of these face masks we're able to to bless the friendship house and bless food pantries and bless other ministries in our community that are, are partnering with us because of your financial generosity. And I would just want to say thank you for that. That's great. I'm thankful that, that we can continue to do that. I, I can't imagine some of the anxiety that missionaries must have on a different continent and uh, just wondering if they're going to be able to receive that, that support. And um, I'm very thankful that our people have been so faithful. Thank you, folks, for doing that. Amen. Pastor, that's all the questions that have come in before the meeting. We, I don't know. I'm sure maybe some have sent some in, but with the changes we've had to make with technology, yeah, we're, we're, we're not, limited a little bit tonight. We haven't been able and to make any live questions. Yeah, so if you email a question in, uh, we'll get you a response back to that. Uh, Robbie Green at LaVondrive.org. And the staff does man that account for me. That's not an account that comes directly to me, but it is manned by our uh, per office personnel here. And uh, if they don't know the answer to it, they'll get you an answer to that. But here's what I'd like to do as we close tonight. And uh, it's already been a, a good while. Thank you for hanging in there with us. And I do apologize again for the technical difficulty that we had. Uh, starting out tonight and uh, thankful for our team sometimes these things happen but uh, I'd like to just close us in prayer tonight Pastor Kirby and thank the Lord for his blessings and uh, I was thinking about this as I was walking in the gym uh, earlier this week it's going to be an emotional first service back absolutely when we're able to come back together in person as believers uh, someone told me pastor you don't realize what you have till it's gone and I'm thankful the church is not gone but they were meaning that we can't come together on Sunday mornings um, many of our community groups are meeting through zoom and other social media platforms um, our student ministry is meeting through zoom a, a number of our uh, ministries ladies the women's ministry is going forward and, and and so we're still up and running we're just doing church differently pastor think about how different this would have been if this would have happened two years ago year and a half ago before we were in the gym we wouldn't have everything in place to be able yes. to have church online yes. we didn't have that kind of technology Absolutely. in the auditorium yeah. and i'm very thankful for many of our volunteers that are coming up here to put all these videos yes. together and to allow us to do that. And so yes. I'm thankful that we that the technology is in place and I'm thankful for so many volunteers that are helping us get that done. Amen. Amen. I, I thank you all and um, look forward to meeting in person again. And I'd just like to say a prayer of protection and safety 
uh, over our church and a prayer of blessing. And so would you join me together as we go to the Lord right now? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for what you're doing in our city, even the things that we cannot see, even the things that we do not know. Lord, you have a master plan. And I do know this, through all of everything that's happening, you are going to get glory. You are going to bring glory to yourself. And Lord, we want to be obedient to you. We want, to be, we want your blessing on our ministry. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around every family in our church. Lord, I, I haven't heard of many, but I know of a few that have already lost their job and, and are unemployed right now. God, I pray that you would bring other work their way so that they can provide for their families. Lord, I pray for some of our shut-ins that can't get out. Lord, some that, if we're just totally honest, they're fearful, they're concerned. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them tonight. And Lord, how we have been praying for them and thinking about them. Lord, I pray for our staff. That, it, Lord, in a lot of ways, a lot of our staff have worked harder the last two weeks than they've worked in, in months. So, Lord, I pray for their help. Lord, thank you for how our team, the church and school staff, and, and, and Launchpad Learning Center, all three ministries have pulled together to be one team to serve you. I thank you for that. And so, Lord, I also pray for a hedge of protection around the families of our church for health. I pray that you would just be with them. Lord, may we keep you first. Lord, may we pray for our missionaries that are serving all across the world right now. And um, Lord, I thank you that I've not heard of any of our missions family that has been affected directly with illness from the virus. And so we thank you for that. Lord, help us to not take for granted how much you've given us. And Lord, help us to look for ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to be used of you. And Lord, we'll be careful to thank you and to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And um, hey, I hope you'll keep us in prayer. And I look forward to the next time that I get to join you uh, in your home or in your, your place, wherever you are right now. And we'll have the technology in better shape next time. Not sure what happened on that tonight. But hey, God bless you. Have a great evening. Good night. Take care.